tips have held a very cor close correlation with gold. 95% if you look back at the past five years, uh, that correlation started to diverge towards the end of 2021. And in particular this year, yeah. this is very strange. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is. But when you say when you say the gold market right now is not reflecting investor expectations for inflation, I think it is. It you is. know, I mean, the investors are expecting the Fed to succeed. Even the gold market. <laughs> it would appear so. <laughs> it, it. I'm flummoxed. But if you look at if you look at investor expectations for inflation and they think it's going to be two point six percent in in at the end of next year right they are believe in the fed's narrative which means the fed is going to continue raising interest rates and bring inflation down and if you believe that narrative you might ask yourself why do i need gold uh and so i think the gold market is believing the fed's narrative and so to answer a question you haven't asked um politicians do that but they don't say they pretend they're answering your question. Yeah. But I'll answer a question you haven't asked, which is when will gold turn? I was gonna ask that next, oh, but okay. you read my mind. When will gold turn? Well, obviously if a drop in a dollar would help. Yes. That's a separate issue. But I think when investors come to appreciate or realize that the Fed will be unable to achieve its target of 2% inflation without a serious recession. When people begin to realize that, that's when you need gold. That realization would also be bearish for the stock markets, would it not? I think it would initially, yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. And major markets typically. I mean, the scenario I see continues to be for a stagflation. I think we're going to raise interest rates uh, to a point where we have a recession, but we don't bring inflation down. Do you think we can expect $2,000 an ounce by the end of the year? By the end of this year? This year. No. No, <laughs> you said that with a little bit of hesitation. No, I think that's a, that would be a little bit extreme. And you know what they say about predictions. You either predict a price or a time, but not both. All right. But no, $2,000 this year, I think, is, is a little optimistic. I'd love it, but it's a little optimistic. All right. So give me one but, of but, the two. But next year, I, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't see 2000 next year. Assuming investors wake up. Well, the, your words. But yes, <laughs> assuming they wake up. And, 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 and we realize that the Fed simply cannot bring inflation down to 2% okay. without an inflation. Then gold, gold is so underloved, so underinvested at the moment, but anything that is favorable to gold will see a, an outsized response, I think. We have a few minutes left. I'll close on gold stocks and uh, how you feel about that space right now. Yeah, well, I think the same thing applies to gold stocks that I just said, only, only twice as much or three times as much for the gold stocks. You look at stocks like, say, Barrick, trading net cash positive, you know, making money. Even at 1650, Barrick's all, and Barrick's not alone, I'm just mentioning Barrick, $1,200 cash, all in sustaining costs. They're still making money. Um, but you've got a huge short position in Barrick. People are, nobody, no generalist wants gold stocks right now. So when, when, when gold starts to move up and sustains that move up, I think you're going to see an outsized return in the gold stocks that are so cheap. Barrick's, Barrick's trading at a 20-year price-to-free cash flow low. It has never traded lower on a price-to-free cash flow. Even when gold was $1,000 an ounce, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so good valuations on the mining side.